Okay. Good morning. How are you? That's a nice little run DMC to get us started. Uh, fantastic. Um, I'm really excited to, to kick this thing off. Uh, 2017 has been probably the most exciting year uh, I, can, I can remember in a long time uh, for many reasons. Um, where can I start? Uh, NP hit its 11th anniversary uh, in July. Um, in August, we were recognized for the eighth year in a row on the Inc. 500, 5,000 list of fastest growing privately owned US companies. Puts us in the one percentile of companies uh, in the United States. Um, that's unbelievable. Um, yeah. Uh, I turned 40. <laughs> yeah, uh, just last month. Um, we reinvented probably everything in our organization this year. Um, and the learning has just been incredible. Uh, and I'm excited. Uh, who's ever like, you know, rebuilt something in their company or needs to rebuild something in their company? Yeah? Uh, it's part of the ongoing journey of entrepreneurship. We all have to be willing to tear down what we built to build something better to go to the next level. Uh, so lots of learnings on that this year, great things to share, excited to help you guys uh, continue to see that ahead of time uh, and continue to progress so that you can get to where you want to be uh, in your journey in life over the next years ahead. Um, we're going to talk about today, I think, the most important topic to kick off this event that I want to share with you for reflection, not just in this hour, but this whole weekend here. Uh, and really, as you finish out the end of this year and set yourself up for where you want to be, uh, not just in 2018, uh, but 2020, 2022, uh, and beyond. Um, and that is really about leadership. At the end of the day, uh, the greatest responsibility we have to ourselves and others is leadership. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner who wants to do something that makes an impact in the world. And that's true whether you're coaching fitness clients and you're just starting out and helping others, uh, or you're working on your own goals and progression path and figuring that out, uh, working with a team, working in the organization, multiple locations, all the things that you're gonna, we have people in the room who are working on various stages of. Um, and I'm really honored to say that. Uh, we have a great group of entrepreneurs in this room. Uh, if you're a stage, one, two, or three business owner, raise your hand. Raise your hand, nice and high. Yeah, these are folks that are in the earlier stages of growing themselves, starting to build a company, starting to scale uh, be beyond um, the startup phase of entrepreneurship. Everybody who's been beyond that remembers what that was like, uh, and frankly, a lot of people don't make it through that phase, right? Most businesses fail after 18 months, right? You guys are all beating that statistic, and you're progressing. You're progressing on into stage four. Who is stage four business owners? Academy, raise your hand. This is really the growth phase of, it gets serious now, um, and we got real commitments. We got real skin in the game in terms of our liabilities, uh, our payroll, our rent, uh, and we've got to really tighten up the machine uh, to continue to grow and continue to make money. Uh, and then we move into stage five uh, and stage six. Who's stage five and six? Raise your hand. Look around the room. This has been the biggest growth in NP in the past year. We are really developing not just people coming in through those stages and progressing up, but also people who are coming in at that level and going to the next level. Um, and that's something I'm really proud of. We have now, around the world, we have five uh, Pro Platinum groups of entrepreneurs that we serve that are doing anywhere from 25 to 100,000 plus a month in, in revenue uh, and doing big things in the world. Uh, and this continues to grow for us in every region, Asia Pacific, where I just was for a few weeks uh, last month, uh, in the UK, which will be next week, go on London to Wednesday, um, and, and in the US uh, and Canada, which is also growing significantly. Who's the Canadians in the room? Uh, let's give a round of applause for the Canadians. The Canadians are awesome. We love them. Uh, so lots of great stuff. Um, but I'm going to get into this topic here about leading yourself. And I want to start with 
asking you, this is going to be an interactive part of our conversation, what is leadership to you? Let's hear some, some comments. Influence. What else? Love that. Inspire people to want more, do more, be more. Yeah, Barney. I love that one. Be an example. Absolutely. Yeah. Being vulnerable. Who gets scared being vulnerable? Anybody? Everybody, right? Yeah. Christine. Multiplying yourself. We all have to do that, right? Who's ever reached like the wall of like, okay, there's nothing else more I can do here, and so we got to multiply this thing, right? If you haven't reached that yet, you will, and probably again and again as you continue to grow, and multiplying yourself is critical to continue to evolve uh, your mission, your dreams, your organization, uh, and so on. Uh, what else? Who else has got contributions here? Service. Absolutely. It's a, it's a big responsibility, right? It just is. Uh, it'd be way easier to just, you know, do nothing. <laughs> but to step up and take on that responsibility uh, is a really big commitment. Organization, tell me what you mean by that. Yeah, have your stuff together, right? You got to. You can't go like halfway at this thing, right? You got you to gotta get yourself together. Yeah, all of these things are great examples of, of leadership. And what I want you to think about right now, and you can take out your pen and paper and grab your notebook. We're going to do a little exercise right now. And I want you to think about whatever's going on right now in your business, in your life, uh, and think about what you're working towards and what do you see as the greatest challenge that you're facing right now, either in your business or in your life. It's the, it's the one that's like, you're knocking right up against it, and you gotta, you got to figure this thing out to move to the next level. What is that for you? Everybody's got something they're dealing with as a challenge. We all have challenges. What is that challenge for you today? And you're just going to write it down. This is just for you. But I want to take a time to reflect on this, because we're going to be intentional about our focus throughout the next three days. And really, in a lot of the conversations we're going to have, both uh, in our breakouts, on stage, uh, in, uh, in the halls, we're going to be talking about how to move beyond these challenges. So take a moment, write that down, and just reflect on it. Okay, you got your challenge? Yes? All right. So let's talk about how we're going to go conquer that challenge, right? That's what we're here for. We're here to find the breakthroughs about how to lead ourselves and others to overcome obstacles and get to the next level, right? That's what it's all about. That's the journey. So here's the moment of truth. Whatever is your challenge, it's unique to you, you are not the only one who's had to face this challenge. I'm sorry but you are not a unique and special snowflake when it comes to your challenge. Many other people have faced whatever challenges you're dealing with right now, and they have worked through it. There's an answer to every challenge. And it's my belief that all problems are leadership problems. If we're facing the same thing again and again, and we're stuck, and we're not able to break through, it's because we're not able to lead ourselves or we're not able to lead others. Let me say that again. If you're facing a challenge and you're not able to break through it, you're not progressively making you know, steps to move to the other side, that is because you're unable to either lead yourself effectively or lead others effectively in overcoming that challenge. And that's your responsibility to figure out. I can't do it for you. My team can't do it for you. It's your responsibility. We can support you. We can hold you accountable. We can challenge you to bring your best so that you can face that and conquer it. But it's your responsibility. 
And when you look at that, those, two, those two areas of leading yourself or leading others, if you're not able to lead yourself effectively, you think anyone wants to be led by you? You think you're going to be able to do that job very effectively? Right? It's like the overweight trainer at the gym talking about how great it is to be fit. Nobody wants to buy from that guy. Right? We all got to lead ourselves before we can lead others effectively and getting to where we want to be. Right? Be an example. Be an example not just for others, but for, to yourself of whatever it is that you want to be, you aspire to be. But here's the other part. Nobody is born with all the answers. We don't come pre-programmed with like how to figure this all out easily. That is the journey, figuring it out, working through the challenge, becoming a better version of yourself. And as you progress through that, taking on new challenges and leading others to break through their challenges. That is leadership. So I'm going to bring you back one of my favorite quotes. We reference it probably every year here at Mega Training. Uh, and if you were here last year, you saw Hal Elrod talk about this uh, on stage. Your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. Write that one again, uh, down again. You can never get too much of that, that quote by Jim Rohn. If you want to progress further than you have before in the past 12 months, you will not get there unless you're continually investing time and energy and resources into your personal development. It's got to be like breathing every day. And, and the more you put in, the more you get out. So I'm going to talk about a leadership model. We've shared this a number of times. I'm going to share some new things on it with you today. A lot of learnings that we've been working on this year at our organization, and really uh, breakthroughs that we've had uh, shared with our team. Uh, have helped me, and uh, I can't say enough good things about it. This is uh, also from our friends at Infusionsoft. One of the best gifts uh, they ever gave me was sharing this model. Um, and when you look at this progression path, and you talk about growing your company, growing your business, it really starts at the center of the circle with you. If your company isn't where you want it to be, it all starts with you. So use this time to think about how can you better lead yourself. We all can better lead ourselves. We're all getting in our own way in some way, shape, or form. Usually, the biggest cause of that is we have some belief that is BS, but we are believing it, and it's holding us back from breaking through. Let me give you an example. What are some of the consult fitness consultations that you perform with clients every day and people that don't sign up? What are some of the, the reasons they tell you they can't sign up and they're not going to be able to progress and work on their fitness? Give me some of the, some of the objections. I don't have time. Okay. Let's, let's, let's pause with that one. I don't have time. Who hears that again and again every day? from people that walk through your door. Now, they believe that to be true, correct? That is their reality. They believe that to be true. I don't have time. But what is the real truth? We all have the same amount of time, <laughs> right? You have the same amount of time that I have and they have. And what's different about the way we use our time versus the way they're choosing to, to use their time? What's different? We've prioritized our health and our fitness, and we create space and we discipline ourselves to give ourselves that time, because why? Because we believe it's important, and what else? We know that when we do that, we actually get more time because we get more energy, we get more capacity, we get more drive. Right? And that makes us better to do everything else we want to do in our lives. 
versus just tired and sleeping and, oh, I don't have time, it's so hard, right? We hear that every day. Well, I will challenge that there, where, if you're stuck right now in something you've been stuck in for a while, who's been stuck in something for a while? Okay, I would challenge that part of that issue is you are holding on to some belief that is holding you back, just like your client believes I don't have the time to, fit, to do fitness, I don't have time to make time for fitness, and that becomes their reality, and therefore they don't progress. There is some belief you're probably holding on to that is holding you back as well. I don't know what that is, but I'll tell you, when you spend time with people that are ahead of where you are, which is one of the best things that you can do on the break, if you're a stage one, two, or three business owner, go talk to stage fours. If you're a stage four, go talk to stage five. If you're stage five, go talk to stage six. And tell them your excuses or reasons why you're stuck and can't succeed. You know what they're gonna tell you? Oh yeah, I remember that. And I did this and this and this, and here's what I did, and my world changed. And it always comes down to going within ourselves, renegotiating our commitments, changing our beliefs, and changing our patterns or behavior. And when we get serious about that, the world changes, right? Who's been through any type of transformation in their life? Fitness, business, whatever. And think about when it sucked, and you got serious, and you made a commitment, and everything changed. Who can identify with that? Guess what? Same story now. That hasn't changed. So if you want to grow beyond where you are today, you've got to make a new commitment to yourself, and you've got to get more serious than you've been about whatever is the issue, and whatever's required of you to overcome that issue. Or don't, and repeat this for another 12 months, and then get another shot at it in 12 months again. But it's your choice. We get to make those decisions and commitments to ourselves, and that shapes our reality. And when you get to lead a company, it starts with you. It starts with yourself, then it's about leading others. Maybe it's your team directly, maybe it's your clients, right? And then it's about leading other leaders, right? Your staff that's leading other people. And then it's about really leading an organization. And if we're not really strong at every ring of that circle, it's chaos on the outside, right? So if you're feeling like it's a little loose out here, Go back to the center, tighten up your game. Because then you got energy, you got drive, you got capacity to really get anything you want to accomplish. So this is a leadership progression model we've been working on this past year at our company. It's probably one of the best things we've ever done. Uh, I could talk all day about lots of different areas of this. Uh, we spend a lot of time with our pro and our platinum clients now and Tiffany uh, Stuart, who you're going to hear from today, is going to share some things uh, about this, um, and definitely they're, they're doing a lot in the breakouts for that group uh, today as well. Um, but it starts with yourself, which is what I'm going to focus on for everybody, because wherever you are in your entrepreneurial journey in your business, tightening up your personal leadership this weekend is going to help you overcome that better and faster. And so that's what I want to spend the time focused on today. Uh, here's a great quote I've got for you. The most dangerous leadership myth, right? This is myth. This is not fact. This is myth. Is that leaders are born. That there's a genetic factor to leadership. That's nonsense. In fact, the opposite is true. Leaders are made rather than born. Leaders are made rather than born. So nobody is born a leader. You've got to become a leader. How do you become a leader? You've got to face challenges, and you've got to lead yourself through them. Then you're going to face more challenges and lead others through their challenges. And the more you do that, the better and better you get. That's how you become a leader. It is only through the journey that you become a leader and a better leader. So the challenge you wrote down, this is, this is your opportunity to grow. That's the game. <laughs> and you grow. You overcome your challenge. You get to achieve whatever success uh, looks like for you, but more importantly, you've acquired a skill set and ability 
that you have now for the rest of your life. And that's a gift that you can share with so many other people to make an impact in the world. Whether it be your team, your family, your friends, you name it. So I want to start with personal vision because uh, this is where personal leadership begins, is in your personal vision. And taking time to really think about where do you want to be in the next five years, personally and professionally? Right, five years from now, we're going to be here. It's going to be 2022. And where do you want to be? What does that look like? And why does that matter? Why is that important to you? I'll tell you one of the most interesting things is asking that question why five times. Because I guarantee the more you examine your personal answers and reflect on those, you're going to find that your vision is going to change. And what you thought was most important to you may not be most important to you. But you don't get that clarity unless you really challenge yourself to ask those questions. And not be afraid to listen to the answers, whatever that is for you. That's your truth, right? But listen to those answers. And why I challenge you to think about five years is because most people are not thinking about five years. They're thinking about today, <laughs> this week, next month, maybe three months, and that's the default line. Most everybody, including us, if we're not leading ourselves very well, and again, if you're facing the same challenge again and again, you're probably not leading yourself very well. I've been through a lot of different times in life where I've led myself very poorly, right? That's also how you become a better leader. You gotta suck and make some mistakes and work through some messy things that makes you better. Right? But we become emotionally reactive, we kind of deal with whatever's fires coming at us, and we're not strategically working towards the result or the future or the success we want to have. Right? It just happens in different areas, right? So think about that five-year vision. Really challenge yourself to think about that this weekend. And when you go home, spend some time getting clarity on that and then breaking that down. Five year to three year, three year to one year, one year to three months, right? So the end of, of January at this point. And then back into the end of November. What are you going to do in the next 30 days? Because I guarantee you, what you do in the next 30 days from now and the end of November is absolutely going to set up success for the next three months, the next 12 months. It's what you prioritize and take action on. And generally, that requires some significant pivots. Right? We've been focusing over here, and we've got to burn that to the ground, and we've got to focus over here. But this is the time for you, this weekend, this space, where you don't have all the things going on in life for you that are you know, grabbing at your energy, and you get to reset that course right? and that focus. And that's what I want for you this weekend. So get clear on that mission. Break down what are those milestones for you that are going to get you there. And this takes, this takes consistent effort and time. You've got to be working on this a lot, very intentionally. Now let me ask you, there are, there are, we all naturally lean one way or the other. Some people are very good uh, with the details and the specific plans, but struggle with like, the big picture, the long-term vision. If that's you, raise your hand. Like, you're good with the, the next few months, but five years, I don't know about that. Raise your hand. Nice and high. Raise your hand. Okay, you are what's called a sensory personality type. They make up 70% of our population. All right, now, if you're the other side, you're great big picture. Like, I know exactly where I'm going to be in five, ten years, but I have no idea what I'm doing to get there. Who's that? Yeah, this is majority of entrepreneurs, <laughs> which is why our room is shaped more in that side. Right? That's intuitive. So you're an intuitive. 
Now, depending on, and we, it's not like we're 100% one way or the other. It's a sliding scale, right? We might have 70% here, 30% might be 60% there, 50-50, you might be even split. But we have strengths and weaknesses on both sides of this. And we've got to work on both sides to really ultimately lead ourselves where we want to go. You've got to have the big picture, but then you also got to have the small pieces that are going to get you there, right? So what does that look like depending on where you are in the scale? Well, I'm going to share a couple things on that with you. So sensories. Okay, who are sensories? The ones who are good at the, 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 the short-term plans, but not the long-term, right? Okay, so you guys tend to think about the immediate details, but not the far out vision. 80% of this is just getting a vision down. Don't overthink the vision. Just get something out of your head and start, work, start having something you're thinking about and working towards. And be practical explaining why you're doing this. Right? Why are we doing these, these immediate steps? Well, it's practical because we're getting to somewhere in the vision. Right? And then we say no leaps of faith. Be clear on the high-level plan so you can conceptually understand how it comes together. You've got to understand the high level so the things you're working on are going to move you forward. Now, we've got a lot of the intuitives in the room, right? So most struggle at the intuitive level with getting a detailed plan to execute, right? Great on the big picture. I have no idea how this is going to get there, right? And so working on details can drain your energy if this is you. And that's why we've got to start to take a more practical way to approach our dreams, right? Dreams don't happen just because we think about them. They happen because we start breaking down steps we can, believe, we can believe in, we can start moving forward. And we have really hard deadlines and clear objectives, deliverables that are gonna really be our best friend, right? Because when we have those baby steps and we execute on those, wow, we move forward, right? We've gotta spend time getting clear on what are those baby steps, each step of the way, and then go do them. Now, the big picture, this is not rocket science, right? But actually executing it consistently in our life, in our personal life, in our vision, in our, in our business, is where we fail. We all fail on some level. And we've got to get better at leading ourselves in these areas so we can be a better leader for others, right? All starts with you if you want to do better here. So some questions for you to think about. And you can just make some notes to yourself we're going to be working on this throughout the whole, the whole weekend, is how does your personal vision, your personal vision for your life, and where you want your personal life to be and look like and when you wake up five years from today, how does it align to your current role? Where does it line up? Where does it not line up? And do you need to be successful in your current role to achieve your vision? So great, let's go do that. If not, then maybe you're in the wrong role. We've got to shift your role, which is also sometimes the case. But get that clarity for yourself. And I find that, you know, having worked with a lot of people on this, um, it's not uncommon where we realize that our personal vision and our business vision aren't matching today. And some realignment is helpful. And frankly, at every stage, the tighter we align those things, the more fulfilled, the more energized, uh, the more happy we're going we're gonna to be and the more we're going to enjoy the journey, enjoy the, the ride, have some fun along the way. And it should be fun. If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. So have, remember to have some fun. Another great quote I got for you, uh, Ken uh, Cassie says, you don't lead by pointing and telling people some place to go. Lead by going to that place and making a case. Right? Going to that place and making a case. And when you've led yourself to that place, you can make a case for others to follow suit. Right? How can you help them apply those principles to leading themselves to where they want to be 
And can you align that with your organization path and journey and destination of where, where you want to be? Sounds easy. Sounds simple. But it takes a lot of practice to get really good at this. And this is, this is what ultimately will determine how far you go in your entrepreneurial journey. Because everybody reaches a wall at some point where your business can no longer grow beyond you. You've reached your personal limitations. Right? And we actually we run up against those again and again. <laughs> because we've got to continue to multiply, as, as uh, a couple people said. We've got to continue to multiply ourselves to continue to grow. So this is, this is the most important skill set you're ever going to work on. Sales, marketing, finance, all that stuff's important. But the foundation of it all is the ability to lead yourself and others to grow. All right, multiplying yourself. Let's get right into this part. The better you know yourself, the better you're going to lead yourself. Now, at 40 years old, I'd like to think I know myself pretty well. However, I'll tell you what, even this past year, spending a lot of intentional time on this, I've learned a lot of things about myself that I didn't know and reinforced some other things I did know. But it's given me more clarity than I've ever had in my life. And that clarity allows us to go crush it. We got to know how best to play the game given who we are. Right? What are your strengths? What are your superpowers? What are you best at? And what gifts and talents should you leverage the most? We all have gifts and talents. Right? There's things that we, we just do great at, and there's things that we struggle at, we suck at. Right? And what's your kryptonite? What gets in the way of you being your most powerful self? What holds you back from that? The more clarity you can get on the answers to these two questions, the more you can set up yourself for success and be that example to others uh, and helping them do the same. So a couple resources I'll share with you for getting clear about your strengths, your superpowers. Uh, strengths Finder 2.0, who's done that? Okay, if you haven't done it, it's 20 bucks online, really easy. Uh, you can search StrengthsFinder 2.0, online quiz, 20 bucks. It's going to give you some information. It's a helpful tool. But the most, absolutely most helpful tool is to, to ask for feedback. Uh, Hal Elrod, who again, if you saw him last year, um, he talks about this in his book, in his The Miracle Morning. And uh, if, you've, if you've done this, raise your hand, to send out an email to some close friends and family and ask them, uh, you know, how they perceive you and where you think you can improve. Who sent that email out? And who sent out and been like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe right now, but I'm going to send this anyway, right? It's not easy to ask for critical feedback about how you're showing up in the world today because that feedback inevitably usually stings a little bit, right? Our ego gets a little bruised because we might... We like to think we're doing great. We like to feel we're doing great. But we have to face some realities of we're not really showing up that way. And frankly, you know, this is causing some areas of disruption in some, some ways. We've got to decide to face that and work through it. It's uncomfortable. Just like anything, any growth is uncomfortable, like working out. It's uncomfortable. But if you're willing to face that, that uncomfortable feedback again and again, and work through it, you get better. Right? You get better. So this is something, uh, these actually are not my, uh, my order. Um, mine is actually achievers number one for me. Uh, I know it's a surprise, uh, but achievers number one for me. Learner was number two. Um, but here's the question. I want to encourage you to send this out to friends, family, coworkers, your, your team, uh, that send this question out to them. Just send them a direct message. You can do it today. See what comes back. Send it out to five people that you know, know you well. When I did this uh, this year, uh, I sent it out to like 
my mom, my brother, some friends, some colleagues, some coworkers, and ask them, this is a great way to kind of ask the strengths question. What do they perceive to be your strengths? What type of problems would you be looking to solve that you'd reach out for me to help with, right? What do they see as your strengths where if they had an issue here, they would come to you and ask for your help with that issue? It's essentially what we're asking. And see what comes back. This is essentially, you're looking for patterns of how do other people perceive your strengths. Because most cases, as humans, we just kind of suck in terms of self-awareness. We really do. We really do. And we've got to ask for that feedback. We've got to be willing to, to, to listen to it. And that helps us grow and improve. So ask for that feedback from, from people that know you well. Uh, this was actual feedback that I got from family, friends, uh, colleagues. Um, they told me, get me motivated to do something I know I'm capable of doing, but can't get out of my own way to do it. That was pretty cool. Uh, that was actually my brother. Uh, strategy and process. Based on what I'm trying to achieve, I reach out to you to help solidify the strategic approach and how to build effective processes to execute that strategy. Strategy is a big part of my superpower. That's something I do really, really well. So I know that's where I should, I need to focus a lot of my energy because it makes a big impact. And I, I can crush that. Uh, leadership, assertiveness and ex executive presence to set a vision, honest feedback and decisiveness. That was from a good friend of mine. So ask for that feedback. Listen to what people tell you and get clear on what you do best and what other people see you do best. It may not be what you think you do best, but you will see patterns as you start to put this together and you identify more of what your natural gifts and talents are. And I'll tell you, the more that we can align our energy and focus of where we do best, we just make a bigger impact everywhere we go, whether it be in your personal life, your business, with your team, with clients, whatever it be, you're just gonna make a bigger impact. That's where you wanna focus your time. Uh, kryptonite, what's your kryptonite? What are you not good at? What do you have challenges with? Uh, a couple great things I'll share. Uh, Myers-Briggs, if you, ha you guys, have, we've talked about this many times for those who have been around a while. Uh, the test is 16personalities.com. It's a free test. You can take it, tell you about your Myers-Briggs type. For me, I'll share a couple of my, I've got a couple more of my notes here. So for me, uh, I'm what's called a ENTJ, which is a commander. I know it's also a shocker, uh, but that's my personality type. And another one I'll share is, uh, we spent time with this year called Five Voices. I urge you to check that out. It's a great resource. Um, I'll talk about it here in just a moment. For me, uh, Pioneer is my, my major voice. I'm great at strategy and planning and execution. Uh, my weakness sometimes uh, is nurturer. I know, it's also tough to, to see. Like, I'm not always giving hugs all the time. Uh, and so I have to be intentional about not like, coming off as a Terminator or RoboCop, as some of my friends like to call me at times. So I've, that's an intentional area for me because it can be a real threat if people perceive I'm just, you know, heartless, which is not true. Uh, I'm just very strategic and focused. Uh, but whatever that is for you, whatever is your kryptonite, you have to be aware of it so you can be intentional about it. I'll show you some things that came out for me with this. These are things that, um, this is my superpower statement, so I'll share this with you. Uh, I strategically identify the greatest opportunities for success to lead committed entrepreneurs, teams, and individuals in achieving their goals. That's what I do best, right? I can strategically identify the greatest opportunities. That's just, I don't know how, I was just, that's my talent. And I can help lead other people through that. My kryptonite, these are, and I focus on these every day now. I wake up, I look at them, and I'm intentional about trying not to cause a train wreck as I go through my day with my kryptonite. So this one, I have three of them. Number one is take time to truly hear the views and opinions of others on the team. Take time to truly hear the opinions of others on the team. Sometimes I'm just like cranking, and I don't give space 
because I'm, I'm a pioneer, so I'm the loudest voice, right? I can dominate the space, but I've got to step back and allow other people to step into that room. Uh, beware of intellectual superiority, superiority complexes. I know, it's tough to see as well. Uh, you don't have all the best ideas. Sometimes you're actually wrong. What? I actually love being wrong now because I love to see how other great leaders can contribute and give them space to do so. And I get to do a whole lot less work that way. Uh, be intentional. Take time to think, of, think through how you can create a culture where other voices can bring their best. That's a big one for me. How can I intentionally create culture in our organization and on our team and, and within this room for all of our clients, right, all of you, so when you go home, you work with your teams, your clients, your family, how can you help others bring their best? Because I guarantee you're not going to get very far unless you get, allow other people to bring their best and create space and environment for them to do so consistently. That's how you're going to get more freedom and more leverage in doing whatever it is you want to do and overcoming whatever challenge is in your way to getting to, to, the, to the mission. So this is, uh, uh, again, five voices I share this with you. You can grab a book. You can take a test online. Really simple. Uh, these are the five voices. Uh, again, we've got nurturer, guardian, creative, connector, and pioneer. Um, this is a great model to learn a little more about when you're leading yourself. You're going to find what is your natural strongest voice. You're really strong here. And where is like your weakest voice? Like you just suck at that one, sorry. Um, we all have one that we're not good at, at least one, if not two or three. Become aware of that and have some intentional focus to counteract that. Because I guarantee there's some area in your life or within the people around you where you create havoc in some way, shape, or form. We all do it to ourselves and to others. But unless you become aware of that and become intentionally focused on improving it, it's not going to get better. Again, start with the self-awareness piece. right? Ask for that feedback and, and listen to it. So identify those critical two and figure out which ones you're going to focus on each day. Um, I can't say enough good things about this. When you have that focus, you can be intentional throughout the day. You win the day, you win the week, you win the week, you win the month, you win the month, you win the year. Right? That's how we do it. And then get to deliver results. So this is the part, if you're a sensory, this is where you thrive. If you're an intuitive, you've got to take time to think more strategically about this and break the things down that are going to get you to your big goal. Right? But we start to organize our month, so now to the end of November, that's going to set up to the end of January, which is going to set up to the end of 2018, which is going to set up to 2020 and 2022, right? Our five-year vision, which is a really big deal. And just think about this. You can actually start this weekend to move forward in that five-year vision and get out of the default line of emotionally reactive hamster wheel that everybody else is on, that's the norm. Get out of that. You've been out of that at many times in your life. We've all had those growth phases where we're like, this is awesome, I'm crushing it, right? How do we stay on that line? This is how we do it. And then ID, identify, right? Critical people needed to execute your plans. If you try to do this in a silo, you're going to fail. You are most likely going to fail. You've got to identify other people that are going to be critical to supporting you. And I can't think of a better room of more supportive, powerful, strategic leaders and entrepreneurs than, than in NPE in this room this weekend. Our staff, our coaches, partners, people you're sitting at the table with, uh, you've got all the resources you need here to get to where you want to be. But identify a couple people, at least two, if not three or four or more, who you can connect with over the next few days and ask them to support you in your plan, in your execution of your plan. 
and then start to hit those baby goals, right? Again, we know this. It sounds simple, but are we doing it? We're not if we're not moving forward, right? We're just not. We're stuck in some way. So how do you unstuck yourself? This is how you, you get unstuck. I'm just reinforcing what you have experienced already at some point in your life. But how do we refocus that to move forward this weekend? That's what I want for you. And when you do that, you get to really take the reins and lead an extraordinary life. And I'm so impressed by the caliber of people that we have in this room and how it's been growing and getting better and better and better, the caliber of people that are attracted and coming into NP, especially with our incredible growth of stage five and six business owners we're seeing. Um, it's really impressive. And you guys are leading yourselves to an extraordinary life. But the better you can do this, the better you can be an example for others, the better you can help your team, the better you can help your family members, your friends, right, your colleagues, do the same. And the more you can help them, the more you get to learn and grow in the process as well. Just continue on that loop. Right? One of my all-time members used to say, you, you can't give good away. You can't give good away. It just comes right back to you. Right? Just get, you can't do too much of it. The more you give, the more you get back. So do that. Do that for someone else. I guarantee there's someone else who looks up to you, sees you as an incredible example, and would benefit so much from you supporting them in their goals. And if you don't mentor someone today, find someone to mentor them. It will make you better. And it will also reinforce where you need to get out of your own way <laughs> to mentor yourself better. Because you're going to be faced with that again and again through that process. But do that. Have fun with it. All right, we've got a, uh, another quote here by Covey. Personal leadership is not a singular exercise. We're starting the process here this morning, right? We've got a busy three days ahead. But it is, rather, the ongoing process of keeping your vision and your values before you and aligning your life to be congruent with those most important things. That is the challenge. We don't get to do this one time. <laughs> we got to continually engage the process of look at our vision, look and make sure you define that vision. If it's unclear, get clear on the path, and then keep that aligned with our values and keep our life aligned to be congruent with what's most important to us. Simple, yet incredibly challenging. Welcome to life. So, we're going to get into this. We've got a, a fantastic three days planned for you guys. And I want you to think about that challenge you showed up with and go right to work on it as we get into our continued sessions this morning, our talks, our breaks. Uh, come up, say hello. I'd love to connect with each of you over the next few days, hear about what's going on with you, how we can support you. Uh, we're going to have a great mega training. So, get ready and uh, let's begin.